Hi, my name is Heather Porter, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast, Animisma, All Things Inspirited. This podcast seeks to offer you a journey home, home to the wisdom of your ancestors, whose face you wear and whose knowing is encoded in your bones, home to your true self, who you were before the passage of this human life offered you its distractions or placed upon you its obligations, expectations and challenges, or perhaps deeply conditioned and wounded you. Animisma is a journey home to who you were born to be, a sovereign, complete child of the universe, that is, a whole, healthy, and well human. This journey home to our magnificent, beautiful true selves provides us with an opportunity to be at peace with whoever we are at this moment, in this time. It is an honorable endeavor and allows us to connect more presently and more deeply with the waters, lands, plants, spirits, and people we share space with. My heart hope is that as you join me on these journeys and explorations, your true self is gently revealed to you in all its grace and in revealing itself to you serves as your own soul compass, a guide providing you with an opportunity to discover what it feels like to walk deeply and beautifully aligned with the exquisite and resilient core of your being. It is my belief that the path of self-discovery is the path of integrity and therefore does not deny your shadow, your pain, or your hidden or wounded parts, but welcomes them forward in service of revealing to you the deepest work that needs to be addressed. I believe it is your birthright to be whole, complete, unburdened, and free. Many today feel we are living in a time of forgetting and a time of confusion, but there are still people who seek to remember, people who seek to share the sacred in our everyday lives, people who believe that everything around us is inspirited, and who seek to offer ways of connecting deeply and authentically with the untamed beauty and wildness of our hearts and the magnificence of our shared world. These people seek honorable connections to the lands they live on, the waters they swim in, and the winds that surround them. They seek to learn the wisdom of the myriad beings that we share this precious life with, and they seek to honor the wisdom of their ancestors, be they from bloodlines, that is blood relatives, spirit lines, that is the ancestry of your spirit or soul, or milk lines, that is the lines that have nourished you, though aren't related to you, such as chosen family, teachers, authors, step-parents, etc., I am one of those seekers, and Animisma is my offering as a journey home to your own wise and magnificent heart light, and I offer this as a bridge of authentic spiritual connection, offered with honor, and offered in peace. Welcome to Animisma, all things inspirited. I'm thrilled that you're here. Free the heart, a chant for Bieltina. Free the heart and let it go. What we reap is what we sow powerful song of radiant light, weave us the web that spins the night, web of stars that hold the dark, weave us the earth that feeds the spark, strand by strand, hand over hand, thread by thread, we weave the web. Welcome, dear ones, welcome to the beloved ancient fire festival of Bieltina, also pronounced Bealtina, Beltina, Belchina, and anglicized as Beltane. This sun fire festival is a full half year turn of the wheel from Samhain when the ancestral veil is at its thinnest. At Bealtina, the veils are also thinned, but they are the curtains that protect the realms of the Fae, our etheric kin. We offer them sweetness and play at this time of the year and offer them our truest thanks for tending the budding shoots and unfurling tendrils, bringing green life back into our lives. Be careful with the Fae. They are known for trickery and will play with those that aren't true to their own hearts. May Eve is the Eve of the Fairies. In the Irish countryside, green branches are placed over the doorways of homes and barns to seek protection from the Fae from stealing milk and butter. It is said that Bieltina calls for protective magic when life is returned and people, and the Fae, are out and about again. Curiosity, thievery, exploration, and passion abound. For those of us who are empathic or sensitive to the subtle waves of nature, 
This is a perfect time to make an offering to the Fae, elementals, and nature spirits in both recognition of them as our kin and in gratitude for all they do in our realm, especially those associated with the queendom of the plants. Bialtina is a festival of fertility, of raw sex and sensuality. All have emerged from their hibernation by Bialtina, and primal urges towards wildness and connection fill the air. It is a time of reproduction, of meeting under the budding trees, of drinking dewdrops at dawn while adorning soft nakedness in bright flowers, and of celebrating the fecund earth in all of her ripening glory. From a drop of honey on the tip of your tongue to the last rays of light at sunset, just to live can be exquisitely sensual, soft, and beautiful. Life is bursting forth. This is the festival of the marriage of the earth to the sun, of the spring maiden's marriage to the green man, of the horned god to the lunar goddess, and their divine union results in the insemination and pregnancy of the earth. Bialtana means the month of May in Irish Gaelic, and I often see it referred to as an homage to the sun god Bel, Bialtana meaning bright or shining one, or the fire of Bel. Though, of course, the gods have their place, and next year I'll likely spend a little more time speaking about them when I explore the wheel through the lens of the plants and the trees, I'd like to take a moment to reflect on the goddess at this time. Danu Forest offers us some beautiful insight into the goddesses at Bialtana. She is a goddess of sovereignty and goes by many names. She is the blessed Welsh goddess Blodoved, whose name means flower face and who's created from wildflowers and the foam of the sea. She is Kraethalad, the beautiful Celtic fairy goddess of spring and summer flowers, whose power births new life. She reminds us that when we embrace self-love and balance, we grow into a state of abundance. In other traditions, she is also called by Cordelia and the May Queen. She is Rhiannon, Guinevere, Maid Marian, Ellen, Niwalan, Airu, and many others. The goddess of Bialtina often comes from the fairy to the mortal world to be fought over by the Oak King and the Holly King. Often she is represented by the form of a white mare, and images of white horses are found carved into the chalk hillsides of Britain. In Irish legends, she is associated with Queen Maeve and Bourne. A goddess of blossom and nectar, she is the sacred source of all fertility, for without her, all becomes barren. These goddesses are fought over by the dual kings or forces of the land, by winter and summer, life and death, but the sovereignty of the goddess, of the earth herself, remains unchanging and constant. In preparing for this podcast, I was powerfully struck by this moment in time. The world is being awoken, and emergence is upon us. We are facing the delicate fragility of our human walk and meeting the sheer force of reckoning that is the natural world. We are drawing on our collective resilience, our communities, and the kindness we have when fear and threat purges us of egotistic pursuits and false narratives. We're also being offered exceptional beauty. The air is clearing. The mountains are being revealed. The animals are returning. The earth is stilling. Death, our lifelong companion, makes itself known to us acutely at this time, and for a great many will take their hands and transition them from this waking life. My prayer is that all who passage across are able to transition clearly from this plane, welcomed home lovingly by their compassionate, well and loving ancestors. This is a time of pause and an opportunity for deepening of connection with self, with other, and with the earth. For those listening from the future, many of us are still being urged to stay at home and minimize contact with others. Given this, I dedicate this Bieltina podcast to celebrating on your own. 
There are so many ways to lovingly celebrate at this time, and the earth in all of her ripening splendor is so very deserving of our attention. She continues, unfazed and unstopped by the cultural movements of human people. So even though we not, may not be able to gather together in large numbers, dancing around a maypole, feasting with friends, or frolicking under the moonlight, there are so many ways we can bring the richness, fecundity, and celebration of Bialtana into our lives. To start, let's begin with the waters of the morning dew and a Bialtana rhyme. A fair maid who, the first of May, goes to the fields at the break of day, and washed in dew neath the hawthorn tree, will ever after handsome be. For those who are able to walk to sacred wells, rivers, ponds or streams, or even the ocean herself, I invite you to do so at dawn on the morning of Bialtana. For those who are at home and have access to an outside garden, even a potted plant on a step or porch, I invite you to visit with the garden or plant at dawn. If you can, dress in green, the preferred color for the celebration that is Bialtana. Sit for a moment. Breathe the fullness and stillness of the first morning of May into your lungs. Feel your connection with the earth and notice the coolness of the air on your skin. Brush your hand gently along the top of the grass, flowers, trees, or bushes, of course making sure that the plants are safe to do so in advance, and wet your skin with the morning dew. This is sacred water, the first dew of May that is said to offer you beauty and softness and is blessed by the goddess and the fae. It is said to have magical consequences. Some even collect this dew by brushing plants with towels and then either freezing or refrigerating the dew-covered cloths for future use. My plan, this Bialtana, is to rise and greet the sun and then spend time with my beloved yarrow plants. Their soft green leaves feel like feathers under the hand. They are right outside my front door and I cannot wait to brush the dew from them while I chant to them the freeing of the heart. I plan to cover my face and neck in morning dew as I watch the sunrise. If an outdoor space is not available to you, I invite you to fill the nicest vessel you have, or any vessel at all, with water and leave it overnight in a special place so you can wash your face, neck and hands in sacred water at the dawn of Bialtana. Creating an altar or shrine for the season is such a beautiful way to intentionally connect with the spirit of May. Clear a space in your home or in your room. Make sure it is clean and if possible, place a piece of greenery in this space. If you're able to access any of the sacred plants of the season, particularly hawthorn, rowan, or birch, lovingly request from the tree its permission to acquire a part of it for your sacred space, and then bring it home. Permission and consent are paramount when working in deep, reverent relationship. It is such a loving and honorable way to be in communion with everything around you. Bialtana is a celebration of life. Decorate your altar space with flowers, greenery, candles, leaves, shells, bark, and anything that is representative of the wonders of the natural world. After communing with the sacred waters of the dawn, I invite you to go to your altar and prepare to light the candles. Feel the warmth of the light that the fire brings. Envision the great Celtic bonfires, the bale fires, magical fires of purification built from the nine sacred trees that are lit in celebration of the spring bursting forth. If you feel so inclined, and of course if it is safe for you to do so, create a space where you can jump over your candle. 
Before you jump, see in your mind's eye all that is within you that is ready to be born into life, that is ready to be made manifest. As you leap over your candle, this can be as small, simple and safe as a tea light candle, see your vision becoming a reality. See your ideas bursting forth into action, full of potentiality and possibility. Jump over your own mini bell fire. As I mentioned, it is said that the sacred fire is built from nine sacred woods, birch, oak, rowan, willow, hawthorn, hazel, apple, grapevine, and fir. In service of your vision of the balefire, please enjoy this poem from Jasmine Moonsong, taken from Wicca and influenced by modern Druidic tradition. Nine woods in the balefire go, burn them fast and burn them slow. Birch wood in the fire goes to represent what the lady knows. Oak in the forest towers with might, in the fire it brings the gods' insight. Rowan is a tree of power, causing life and magic to flower. Willows at the waterside help us to the summer land. Hawthorn is burned to purify and to draw fairy to your eye. Hazel, the tree of wisdom and learning, adds its strength to the bright fire burning. White are the flowers of the apple tree, that brings us fruits of fertility. Grapes that grow upon the vine give us both to joy and wine. Fur does mark the evergreen to represent immortality seen. But elder is the lady's tree. Burn it not, or cursed you'll be. So I think we were all warned there uh, that we are not to burn elder on the sacred bell fire. Take your bell fire candle and place it back on your altar. Given that the veils are thinnest on this day and it's Samhain, and though the fae are invited forward and honored on this day, it is of course also a day to connect with your beloved, wise and well ancestors. When I connect with my ancestors around Bieltana, I can feel them by my side celebrating the beauty of the season through me, their living daughter. If you have the means and are able to, adorn yourself with a headdress of greenery. Make a daisy chain, with the daisy's permission, of course, or create a beautiful headdress of fresh greenery and flowers. Wear richly scented floral oils and spend your morning clearing and cleaning your space. If you have a tree and some cloth or ribbon, preferably red, white, and green, decorate the tree. As you tie each piece of cloth or ribbon to a branch, make a wish for the upcoming season. I think you probably all know by now how big a fan I am of ritual baths and bathing, and Bieltana is the perfect time to take a salty bath of purification. If you feel so inclined, as you run your bath, consider kneeling next to it and envision the waters that flow as waters coming from a sacred well. Close your eyes and connect with the spirit of the sacred waters that have come to partner with you in your ritual of purification. Take your salt and whisper a blessing or just one simple word of gratitude into it before offering it to the sacred waters in your bath. As you enter the bath, quietly ask the spirit of the waters to purify your body and focus on your heart center or your heart chakra. Bieltana is the perfect time to attune your heart to the cycles of the earth and to her rhythms. In my research for Bieltana, I read a fascinating passage by Glennie Kindred and I plan to explore this during my own purification bath on Bieltana. How is your whistling? Mine is pretty strong, providing I am hydrated. According to Glynny, whistling women were believed to conjure up destructive storms. 
Therefore, during the centuries of witch hunts, girls and women were forbidden from whistling. It is used in sympathetic magic to raise a wind and to draw in and send out energy. Glenny suggests that on Bjeltena, why not explore your abilities to use whistling in this way or use it as a focus for sending healing? At a time when a great many have been taken ill, I plan to whistle healing and health for as long as I can, offering pathways of wellness to any and all who need them. Learning the whistles of birdsong is another beautiful form of shamanic communication, and I often whistle during my personal practice, as do some of my teachers, to call to spirit and invite it closer towards me. Invite your wild spirit, your wild heart, to join you. If you can't whistle, sing, howl, tone, hum, clap, rattle, or scream. Invite your wildness in and ask her to stay. While we're on the subject, I'd love to take a minute to consider wildness. Your wildness. Untamed, passionate, loving, and free. Unburdened, untethered, and unobliged. What is your relationship to wildness, both within and without? You are free to live, move, and breathe as you choose. Take out your hair. Throw off your clothes. Jump around, skip, and swing your arms. Blow kisses to the sky. I invite you to really feel into your body, your sacred skin, and see yourself as a wild heart. Even if you've been cooped up in your home for the past few months in service of community support, you are still a sovereign and complete child of the universe. Why not ask your guardians, well ancestors, guides or helping spirits to show you what it is to feel alive, fresh and free. I'm going to rattle for a minute or two to stir up the wildness inside of you as you see yourself as undomesticated, untouched and in deep relationship with the natural world as you explore your natural self. Wild animals move effortlessly in communion with the earth. Wild trees bud and burst forth. They grow high and wide, and they let their roots run dark and deep. The natural world is wild, integrated, and evolved. The natural world is self-regulating. Be wild. Be free. Release yourself.
really did enjoy Glennie Kindred's reflections on this holiday. She said, Bialtana energy is one of reverence for all of life, celebrating and honoring the fertility that grows from the union of opposites. It is about the sacredness and power of unbridled love and sexual pleasure and deep connections of the heart. Here at Bialtana, these powerful life forces are not just focused on sexual union, but unions of all kinds. Integrity of intention brings the physical and spiritual into balance. This creates a strong life force and an energy that releases the alchemy of manifestation. At Bialtana, direct your focus to pledge your allegiance to the earth your home, your kin, and especially now when we are witnessing glimpses of her healing during this time of emergence and pause and the return of her wildness, the Altina is a perfect time to take full responsibility for your actions upon our blessed world. For this Bealtina episode, my most heartfelt thanks today goes to Laura O'Brien, Alan Watson Featherstone, Lisa Chamberlain, Glennie Kindred, Julie Kramer, Melanie Marquis, Denu Forrest, Claire Walker Leslie, Frank E. Grace, Jasmine Moonsong, and Philip Cargom. In closing, may all that we do and say today and always be for the benefit of all beings. May we walk with integrity, honor, and grace. May we welcome our shadow forward in service of revealing to us our wounds that need tending as we walk in human form. May we live our lives in safety, offered in service, guided by spirit. As we close today in the Dowling month of May, I invite you to close your eyes, make conscious your breath, and feel the earth beneath you. Whether you are sitting, standing, or lying down. Whether you are outside or at the top of a high building. I invite you to meet and connect with the earth. And I humbly ask that you take a moment to hold space for an intentional, heart-forward acknowledgement of first peoples and spirits of the land. I invite you to speak the indigenous first people's names of the land where you currently reside. I humbly acknowledge that this land, the land that I currently live and work on, the land that holds me while I record this podcast about Celtic indigenous wisdom traditions, is land that holds structures of law and maintains knowledge through oral traditions which have been practiced for thousands of generations by the Ute Arapaho, and the Acheti Shakawan, or Seven Council Fires. I honor their law and their laws. I honor their strength, their wisdom, their customs, and their cultures. I honor their ancestors and their living children. And I honor their spirits and animal allies. I honor their love of the great Mother Earth. I am sorry for all that has passed. And I live as your humble ally and human sister who is listening to you. I honor you. To you, my listener, wherever and whenever you are, whether you are here with me in 2020 or listening from the future, I honor the spirits of the land you are on and the land that I am on. Thank you so dearly for joining me today. I look forward to connecting with you for episode 5 of season 1, Letha the summer solstice. You can learn more about this episode, the Celtic Wheel of the Year, find resources, and more about upcoming episodes at thepathofintegrity.com forward slash animisma. Animisma is brought to life by the magical Stephanie Halligan. You can learn more about her work at stephhalligan.com. Thank you for taking the time today to listen. If you'd like to hear more, I invite you to subscribe and share amongst your community. Email subscribers receive instructions prior to the podcast 
regarding offerings, rituals, ceremony, etc. To connect with me or to schedule a healing session, please visit my website at www.thepathofintegrity.com.